everyone and welcome to my international interview series. I'm Rebecca Adams from RebeccaAdamsBiz.com and today I'm talking to Samantha Jansen. Hello honey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm really good, really excited to interview you. Yeah, look, when I got the opportunity I was just really excited and really grateful too, just um, really looking forward to how this all unfolds and how we can connect with more people and serve them at the highest level by sharing some insights to you know what the journey that we've been on and yeah. the, you know where we're hoping to go over the next few years so really really excited so thank you for having me you're welcome you're welcome we're really really thrilled and honored so thank you now samantha is in australia she yep. is owner and founder of samantha Jansen publishing she is owner of Platform for Success. One of her recent publishing product, projects is She Leads, and we'll talk more about that later. She is also an author, publisher, and influential leader. So, Samantha, how did you get started in your business? My business was born, to be honest with you, as a result of a life changing situation, meaning um, I was working a nine to five job, which was pretty good. I actually enjoyed it. And then I was pregnant with my second child, about four and a half months pregnant. And my partner and I split up and I kind of went, okay, I'm at a crossroad. I mean, I kept working for the next um, four and a half months while I was pregnant. And then when I went on maternity leave, I made a decision to actually start a business, but it was not this business. Um, it was an online retail store. And essentially that was my first um, entry point into the business world um, just over five years ago. So wow. since, since then, obviously, you know, I had a lot of learnings from that business that mm -hmm. didn't work, but taught me amazing lessons on so many levels. And that was essentially my um, entry into embracing a whole new world <laughs> and learning mm -hmm. along the way, which was just fantastic. And you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. It's interesting because when I first started in business, I had a perception, a perception of what I thought it would be like. And I think with anything that you're trying for the very first time, you kind of go, oh, I think it's going to be like this. You know, I've heard about, I've heard, I've heard from people, yeah. I have read books, oh, it's, it's going to be like this. And then you're challenged and you learn new things and you go, I really love these kind of tasks and these kind of things. And these ones I really need to either upskill or outsource. So now where I am, I definitely love every task um, that I do. But along the journey, there were some things that I went, oh, not really for me. <laughs> but look, you, you learn and you embrace the challenge and then you go, how can I, how can I do it better next time? So yeah. And you grow as your journey progresses. You grow and like you said, you make the mistakes, you learn and you keep going and going and going until you, you know, you are where you are right now, which is truly phenomenal. Yeah. Your journey and everything that I've been watching is magnificent. So you're doing everything like you should be anyway. It's absolutely fantastic. And it's, it's amazing how you've taken on board everything that you've learned and you're molding yeah. it into even better and then you're creating more impact as well. So yes. it's really inspiring. So yeah, no, thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you do what you do? That's an interesting question. And I love that question. So as I mentioned before, when I started in business, it was essentially to find my way. But currently where I am with, when I look at my life and business, what I do is really driven by my purpose purely because I found it. I found it along the way. It didn't happen in that first year. It didn't happen in the second year. Towards about year three, that was sort of over the last two and a half years is where there was absolute clarity. And now I do what I do is purely because I want to build other influential leaders in the world where they leave behind a legacy, they create impact, and they are truly living their life's purpose just like through the support, the love, and the education that I got, I found my way and I just want to pay that forward. So essentially, that's, that's what I'm doing currently and, and it's very fulfilling. And it's absolutely, I, as I said, I've been watching your journey and it, it's just the amount of impact that you're making is truly outstanding and you're bringing on, you're getting bigger and bigger and you're just bringing on more and more influential people 
and you know helping other people to progress and everything it's fantastic so what's the most important lesson now i'm intrigued to know this answer what's the most important lesson that you've learned in business now i know that you mentioned a few things you know you've molded a few things and things went wrong and then you got back on track but what's the most important lesson you've learned okay so in terms of the most important lesson, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist to some degree. Okay, okay so that almost tries to take over when I'm challenged. But if I was to say one thing that I've learned and something that I've kind of really stuck to in the last probably 18 months to 24 months is if I'm not good at something like a specific task or something that not just that I'm not good at, but I don't enjoy it. I'm okay with admitting, look, I'm not good at it. I don't enjoy it. And I'm, I want to find someone that is absolutely amazing at it. So kind of going, not just going, oh, I want to outsource it, but I actually want to find someone that's really good so that they can do a perfect job <laughs> because yeah. I can't and being okay with that. So I think if you're a perfectionist, that's something I would say to someone because I've been on that journey. It was quite confronting to admit but also being vulnerable so that took a little bit of discomfort to get comfortable admitting that but once you sort of cross over to the other side it's like okay this is awesome <laughs> i've found really good skilled people that can do something that i'm not good at doing yeah. and being okay with it yeah well sometimes in business we feel as though we've got to be good at everything haven't we and kind of you know, do this, do that, do that, and everything. And sometimes, you know what, it, it just doesn't work out. We're not good at it. But being a perfectionist like yourself, it's like, well, actually, what am I going to do? And I love how you've actually thought outside the box because some people would procrastinate and they would sit there and go, no, I am going to do it. I, and then it'll take forever. And then the project that they're working on doesn't manifest and it doesn't come into fruition because you know, they're, they're too stubborn in a way. And whereas you yeah. have taken courage as well in order to go, you know what, I'm not good at this. I can't do it or whatever. And then, and then go from there. So that you've not let it hold you back. you you being perfect hasn't held you back. No. And I think, look, it took time to be honest, Rebecca, it took time because you know, when you're just starting out in business, you wear many hats. And, you know, you would probably relate to that where you go, you know, when you first started, we, we, we wear so many different hats and it's like, okay, today, what am I doing? You know, what role am I playing? But then as the journey progresses, it was just um, one of those things, as you mentioned before, where you spend so much trying, a time trying to get this right that you go, yeah. <laughs> seriously, yeah. I'd rather do something that I'm really good at and do it efficiently than trying to upskill and not really even enjoy the upskilling process so I go yeah okay I'll admit I put my hand up and go yeah it's not for me. <laughs> I love it I love it I probably still wear too many hats but yeah I'm outsourcing a lot and um in 2018 so yeah it's um, that's made me smile so yeah <laughs> name, name five things that you do in your business that you can recommend others doing this Okay, so coming from, I love social media and specifically Facebook and LinkedIn. If I was to say five things, I would say it's really important to translate your authentic self on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and look, I mean, I'm on other social media platforms, but I think from a business perspective, it's really important to showcase you. That would be one. Number two would be when people connect with you send them a personal message like hey thanks for reaching out and con connecting you know really it's i often say to people it's called social media like meaning social media so get social why are we just treating people as numbers so number two would be get social like you know connect build relationships because as much as it's online relationships matter yeah. number three choose your inner circle really carefully and you want to have people I say generally about three to five people that really believe in your big picture your big vision and even though you are a little bit scared about going oh my gosh that is really big they're going yeah it's scary but you know we have got your back and we see that big picture even if they can't directly support you that having that cheer squad as I call kind of backing you gives you that reassurance that would be number three number four would be 
take time out, not because you need it, but just because you should. Um, and it, it sounds really strong when I say, you know, you should. But again, coming from a nine to five job where, you know, you have your paid annual leave, you get time off holidays. I think when you wear a business hat, because you are driven by love and purpose, you can be doing a lot more hours, a lot more time. And it's really important to go, no, nah, this is what it is. I'm, I'm going to lay some boundaries and I'm going to take some time off because I deserve it and my body needs it. So that would be number four. And lucky last would be, I actually would say you never fail until you give up, meaning something might not work in your business, whether that's your marketing, your sales, or whatever that might be. You actually don't fail until you go, no, I'm done. I'm walking away completely because I have personally experienced things that have not worked and I've just gone, what can, you know, how can I go back and reflect on this and really put a pin on it and go, that was it. That's what I need to tweak. So I think those would be my five suggestions. Like, you know, be open to reflecting back, even if it's really, you know, uncomfortable, you're kind of going, oh, I don't feel really good about this. Mm -hmm. Just give yourself just that one opportunity because that could potentially give you that, ah, that's what didn't work. And you would never repeat that again. So it's a learning experience. I love it. And you know, yeah, it's very powerful, everything that you've said, especially, I mean, all of it is, but especially I find that number two, your social media section that you were yep. mentioning then is that so many people forget that it is social media. It's not about befriending someone on, say, for example, Facebook and then send them a message saying, do you want to buy this? Do you want to join my team? Do you want to do that? And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm not going to respond to you. Whereas no. everyone, like yourself, when you requested my friendship, I was like, nice to meet you on here, nice to connect on here and everything. And, and it's nice that you've mentioned about the social aspect because people forget and they do yeah. treat everyone like a number and no one is a number. So exactly and i think just across the board we as human beings we all want to be loved supported and accepted and whether that's online offline wherever you are whatever the environment you just want to feel as i say that warmth of going oh that was so nice for to get that message or you know to get that email or to get even a text message whatever that might be because we feel that so let's if we feel that way let's give that back let's pay that forward definitely definitely i love it i love it so with your i love this next question so how do you persevere after a setback especially with the business that you were doing you know five years ago yep. with all the little things that kept going wrong or whatever how do you deal with that Okay, so for me, when that originally happened five years ago, it was a little bit of a backstory. So I come, come from a bit of a finance background and numbers are important to me to quite a big, in a, in a big way. And with that business, things were just not adding up, not just from a money sales thing, but in terms of just the logistics. So for me, it was just always taking a check-in either every month or every quarter at a bare minimum with any business. And this is something I say to my authors, my clients, my in-house consultants. I mention this all the time. I go, take a check-in. So if I'm noticing a pattern coming up and it's starting to play on my mind where I'm going, oh, why is this not working? What's going on here? I actually take probably, to be quite honest with you, maybe about two to three days where I kind of just sit on the thought and go, what's going on? Like what's coming up for me? emotionally but also in a logical perspective like what's not working and with that business that I ended up sort of walking away from um, I just went it was not going to hit the sales targets that I wanted to and I had to come to terms with it and to me it was like as much as that's hard to kind of admit at the time I went what could you have done differently, Samantha? Like, was it you should have had a business coach at the time? Should you have done like some sort of small business marketing course? What is it that you needed to succeed in that, that you didn't have? So it was always looking at what could I have done or should I have asked for help? And to be honest with you, back then with that business, I probably didn't, I didn't do either of those. So that would be, that would, 
that would be why it didn't work. But then also it was sort of more transitional thing as well. So I think sometimes you just got to ask yourself, is it, is it, is it a passing by transition, like a phase yeah. or is it just, you need to take a check in and go, what's going on here? Numbers, other logistics, or whether it's the passion dying as well. Cause sometimes I think depending on how long the journey has taken you to get to a place, you yeah. could be feeling yeah. like, Ooh, the passion's dying. I'm getting really tired. I feel like I'm going to burn out. I need to take a check yeah. in and it could be a combination of those. So yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. And the thing is, you said that you didn't do those two things in your previous business. My question to you now is, do you do them now? In yes. That you've got, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was, to be honest with you, yeah. as I said, when, <laughs> yeah. when I started that, it was just, I was really in the headspace of, oh, how hard can it be to start a business? Like, this is going to be a piece of cake. I've read all these books. I've, I've done little bits and pieces of research. It's going to be okay. And I had no idea, to be quite honest with you. I had no idea. I don't think I even had 5% of that whole picture that I should have had. It was purely a transitional phase. And I just wanted to get out of the 95 job, start something with no logistics, no proper foundation, no, no kind of support. Like yeah. there was no business coach, there was no mentoring. And when, you know, when I took a check in at three months, I went, yeah, something's not quite right. What is it? And that's when I actually, to be honest with you, discovered uh, personal development, uh, the power of networking yeah. and really reaching out and investing into education where you are given accountability and support yeah. and a proven system. And since then, over the last five years, I've had four business coaches, which have been just, just amazing because yeah. I'm going, you know what, they have done all the hard work before me. <laughs> so it, it makes sense. Um, and look, I go, that was a great learning, you know, three, four months of barely any sleep, but I learned a lot, you know, from it. So I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love how your journey has progressed as well, because you've realized that something you were doing wasn't working you took it as it was you you tweaked and everything and then you've you've done everything because a lot of people can can kind of sit there and carry on doing the same thing over and over and over and thinking that the end result is going to change but they're still doing the same thing whereas yeah. you're like no this isn't working something's got to change so you did a full 360 and now it's just, it's just amazing it's your, your journey is truly fantastic. So I love it. What is one goal that you'd like to fulfill in the next three years? Okay. So it, one thing that has been um, somewhat personal and I kind of actually put a timeline on it as 2020. So it is oh. shorter than three years, but it yeah. was a 2020 goal. So I'm, I'm going to verbalize that and say it out loud. So I wanted to actually have clients across Europe and Dubai and run my publishing programs in Europe and Dubai. So that is the intention for 2020. And, you know, we're still a little while away. So about two and a, two and a, two, two years or so, but that's the intention and that's the goal I want to achieve. So I've said it out loud. I love it. I love it. And it will come true. It will definitely come true because with your determination, your drive, it will definitely come true. I love it. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> so with you, you mentioned about kids earlier. So with you having a family and having a business yep. and balancing everything and clients and customers and everything else, how do you stay motivated? Uh, I meditate every morning for about five to 10 minutes. Uh, it is a guided meditation, just using my smartphone. Um, and I'm really conscious that either on a Saturday or a Sunday, I actually take time out to do things other than business. So I'm not actually in a business headspace and that recharges me automatically almost. I know that sounds a bit like, what do you mean automatically? When I switch off, I completely switch off and that kind of, in some way, like I don't really understand the science behind it, but it really helps me. <laughs> yeah. It just works. Um, I do love to read. So I do love to um, read maybe about two books in a month. It might not be business related. It could be more on um, mindset, uh, emotions, any, anything in, 
I guess it is business, but not really because it's personal development. Because yeah. I do have a curious mind and I'm one of those people that if you plant a little seed, as I say, I kind of need to find out the end result. So if someone recommends a book, then I kind of go, well, I want to get an overview of it. So I find books and small little inspirational things kind of trigger it again, you know, to keep me on track. But it's definitely having, um, I have seen a massive result as a result of uh, meditating every morning. So I think that really helps me stay on track on a daily basis. So I would give it to that, yeah. Well, that leads me on to the next question. But before yeah. I ask the next question, um, I've asked this to every entrepreneur on the series. So you are going to have a whole list of books to read because yeah. everyone recommends a book. So yeah, it's um, you might have read some, but some of them, yeah, you might not have. So what is one book that you would recommend to everyone and why? Um one book that I read recently and I have actually read it, I think it's a third time that I've read it and it's called The One Thing. So One Thing and the cover actually has the number one. Okay. It's for the now I've just had a moment where I can't remember the author, but it, it's a great book. And it's interesting because I always had this mindset that I can multitask and I'm really good at juggling a lot of things. But this yeah. book really challenged me to go, no, just focus on one thing and get that one thing done. And wow. whenever I feel like oh, I've got so much on my plate, I go, let's just go back to a few of those, um, few of those principles on your mind and go, remember that book, Samantha? It said one thing and one thing only. And I'm going, oh, okay, focus on the one thing. The one thing that is going to impact yeah. on a bigger yeah. scale. Yeah. So I would highly recommend the book, The One Thing. Uh, just because on a, on a personal level, not just in business, but it has really helped me refocus and kind of pull me back in and kind of go, what are you doing? <laughs> so, yeah. I love that. And I like how you've, you've recommended that book because there's so many people out there in life or yes. business or both yes. that are spinning yes. and doing everything and the here and there and everything. And I like how you're retraining yourself to just focus yes. on one thing Therefore, you've got 100% focus on that one thing and you're putting everything into that one project. However, the yeah. little voice in your head is like, no, you're supposed to be doing all these other things as well. So I totally get it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it is that little voice and you're like, sure, just go away. Like, leave me alone. Just shut it up. In the, in the yeah. thing. But one, one thing that works when, you, when people are on the, um, on, the, on the laptop and they're doing work, close yeah. all the tabs. Just have one. Yeah one open and get that one thing done otherwise everything's going to be open and then it's just that's like inside your head is the voice saying no you should yeah. be doing more things samantha but then if you've got all the tabs open on your laptop as well that's another thing saying no come on you've got to check this and check your email and do this that and the other so i love exactly. that recommendation yeah and that's interesting you mentioned that rebecca because i think it was about 18 months ago, I was having a conversation with this gentleman at, it was a business meeting at his office. And something that I noticed from him was he, when I walked into the room and, you know, we shook hands, greeted each other, he took his smartphone and he turned it face down on the table. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that was interesting. Like I had not actually paid attention to that happening before. Yeah. And then, I, and at the end of the meeting, I realized as I walked out, because that kind of, you know, just again, planted a seed. I thought, what a great idea because the whole time we were there and having this conversation, there would have been notifications coming through, but it didn't light up the screen because it was not face up. And I thought, oh, that is brilliant. So now over the last, you know, since that meeting, I have always made sure that I might have my phone, you know, on silence, but face down. And I kind of go that way, whatever it is, it can wait. When I'm ready, I can flick it the other way. And that as you said, a bit like closing all the tabs, there's less interruption and your mind doesn't go, oh, what was that? Oh, I can see the light coming through. Like, no, there's nothing happening. There's nothing happening. You can see, can't see anything. Know. You turn into a slave to your phone, don't you? And I keep saying to everyone, you need to stop. You need to just yes. stop. But I, I do that. I turn it over. So yes. you have my undivided attention or whoever I'm talking to, I, I do turn the phone over. It's something that yes. I do. It's, it's very powerful and it means a lot to the other person that yes. you respect them 
and your time with them as well and you are interested in what they've got to say so yeah it makes a massive difference and I thought that was just a great learning for me at the time and yeah I've loved it I've I've never been tempted to kind of go oh let me just check it out no 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 I'm good with that <laughs> yeah, yeah so you mentioned Europe and Dubai earlier on yeah. in one of the answers to the questions but if you could travel to any country in the world where would it be and why is that on a business level or on a personal level? Life or business, it's up to you. Okay, so something that I have been that has been on my radar, I would love to go to Paris, just okay. on a personal note. So that would be something very personal to me, just because I love um, when it comes to movies. Um, I love those romantic movies, like the real, as you would say, chick flicks, yeah. and. To me, I'm like, oh, I would love to go to Paris, just even if it's, you know, for 24 hours or 48 hours, just, you know, catch a train from, 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 um, from London. It would be just fantastic. So that, on a personal note to me, um, it's something that I would love, yeah, love, love, love to do. And, yeah, again, I've given myself, you know, a little time. I'm like, you know, if I'm doing that, I might as well, you know, do quite a few other, other countries but yeah Paris would be the highlight for me fantastic I'll be watching out on your social media platform on Facebook for that as well I want the photograph I want to look at you exactly with the, yeah. yeah with the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower yeah. yeah there you go there you go so what's the best piece of advice that you've been given and by who okay so oh uh Dr John D Martini have you heard of him no Okay, well, so Dr. Yeah, uh, Dr. John D. Martini was the first person that I sort of um, had access to in terms of my personal development journey. Okay. And I remember hearing him speak here in Melbourne, Australia at, you know, one of those big conferences where you've got about 250 people in the room. And he spoke for about an hour. And at the end of it, I felt like I was the only person in the room. And I remember very clearly... I was probably about six months pregnant and I went up to him at the end and I said, I'm at a crossroad, you know, I want to start a business, but I'm employed. It's good money. It pays for a good lifestyle, yeah. but I'm at this crossroad and I don't know what to do. Like I've got a three-year-old, a baby on the way, you know, it's probably sounds crazy to kind of just throw it up in the air and go, oh, I want to find my purpose and I want to live my life on my terms and follow my dreams. And I remember he took me by the hand, like, just like that. And he goes, if that's what you want, just do it. Some people will support you and others won't. And that's okay. But at the end, before you became a mom or before you became a daughter or before you became a partner, you are who you are. And just honor yourself for once in your life rather than embracing all these other roles that have come upon you. And I went, huh, that's interesting. Okay. Right then, my mommy role can be on hold. My daughter role can be on hold. I'm Samantha. I'm going to do this. And look, to be honest, Rebecca, that was it was those words that actually gave me the confidence that when I went on maternity leave, I will start a business because I had so much um, stuff going on in my head about, you know, can I do this three-year-old, a baby on the way? Can I do this? All these other fears were creeping up and it was those words and that sense of security that I felt when he held my hand yeah. and, and said those words were what kind of went, I can do this. I am Samantha. Like before I became mom or before I'm Samantha, I owe it to myself. And it was just, yeah, it yeah. was just really yeah. moving. And yeah, just, just that love and warmth that I felt that has stayed with me, you know, over the last five and a bit years. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really grateful to that. Well, I'm glad that you, that you brought that up because a lot of people will be, you know, thinking, well, I'm in a full-time job and I've got bills to pay, but I want to set up my own business. And I love the impact that you just said with what he said to you. So, yeah. Yeah, it is. And I think um, so often it's so easy to get hung up in that moment where you kind of go, yes, I have bills to pay. Yes, I'm used to some sort of a lifestyle, you know, because back then I always had my four weeks annual leave to, you know, travel interstate or go overseas. Um, I used to love to shop 
clothes and handbags was my thing. <laughs> and then, you know, to, to transition from that lifestyle and those um, extra needs and wants kind of thing that, you know, you, you are used to, to kind of go, I need to pull back one or two yeah. so I can focus on a new direction, but also being conscious to the financials that are going out. Um, because it's a whole new world. You don't know what to expect. You're in unknown territory. Right. So it was that change. And having that, the outside social world telling you one thing, and then there's this internal voice saying one thing, and then you've got one amazing human being that inspired you kind of going, but that's what you want. And I kept having to check in on that nearly every week, to be quite honest with you, to kind of go, yeah, that's what I want. I'm willing to make some sacrifices. I'm willing to be uncomfortable because I want to give this my all rather than kind of sitting on the fence and going, oh, yeah, I'll just see how this goes. You know, I had to make it work and I was determined to make it work. So, yeah. Fantastic. And you have you pulled it off and you're here. So yeah. it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So two more questions. So yep. the first one is, what is one piece of advice that you could give to everyone watching right now? Oh, that's a good one. Look, if I was to just summarize it and say one thing, if you want something bad enough, you have to be willing to get uncomfortable and be willing to be challenged because I am yet to meet someone through a personal experience or a business experience that has achieved amazing things without being challenged yes. and without being determined. So my thing would be, be prepared to be challenged, embrace it, look at the learnings, look at the learnings and kind of go, I've got this. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Now, Samantha, your, um, when people go to your website, if you'd like to say what your website is and then, um, you know, tell people what they can expect when they go to your website. Okay. So if you, they were to go on to platformforsuccess.com, so it's with the numerate number four in the middle. Uh, it is very much a social media consulting business in that one. And then samanthajansenpublishing.com is where I help you uh, become a published author. And I give you some resources are there, some blogs are there. Um, you see some cool videos that I've been doing over the last few uh, months um, on a new project around giving insights on um, small business tips and tricks around social media marketing and that sort of thing but essentially there's some resources out there um, and an opportunity to connect with me just hear another version of you know something else that I might have been talking about at the time so yeah fantastic thank you so much Samantha for the interview and also for saying yes and coming on board with it as well I truly appreciate it thank you so much no, that's all right. It was my pleasure. And as I said, Rebecca, really grateful for the opportunity and looking forward to connecting with you again sometime soon. Thank you. And everyone who's watching, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.